believe in yourselves. Take care of your friends. Respect your coach. Respect the world. Yeah, we don't know. Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Protective Life, Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, and University Kia. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie, and yes, I am hoarse. 21,000 people were in Lewis Cruz Stadium yesterday, homecoming 2021. Didn't work out too well for us, coach, but you had to be happy with the crowd when you walked out onto the field. Yeah, it was a welcoming sight to see this, uh, all the fans and uh, all the maroon and white. Um, it, it was packed. It was packed, and uh, they did their part. They came and showed up, and uh, we didn't do our part. Uh, we didn't come to play. Uh, worst game we played since we've been here. Mm. Uh, probably the worst defeat of my coaching career. So um, we got to go back to the drawing boards, uh, keep working, want to watch the tape, uh, learn from it, and we got to get better. And we got to get better fast because it's a good FAMU team coming in here next week. And if we, don't, if we play the same, uh, it's going to be pretty much the same result. So There's an added bit of pressure. I'm sorry, Coach. There's an added bit of pressure with FAMU coming to town. Former Bulldog head coach James Spady is on the FAMU staff. His son is the starting center on the team. Coach, are going to come with a little bit more enthusiasm, especially after us coming off a loss. Yeah, yeah, they will, you know. Uh, but it's not the same as uh, Spady being the head coach. He's just assistant coach. So, um, But, again, he is coming back. His son is playing. So, um, we're not really worried about that. We got to worry about us. We got we got to get some stuff corrected, get some stuff fixed, and we got to play better and take care of the football and and stop the long runs and stop the long passes. And uh, we just didn't play well at all, man. I mean, I I feel bad, uh, but it's my fault. I'm the head football coach, and I didn't have my team prepared, and uh, I got to do a better job. Of course, coach. Student athletes, when they don't do what they're supposed to do, there are consequences. For a head coach, when you don't perform like you think you should, what do you do to reset yourself? Well, you know, it's like I always talk about, you can't live off last week's game, good or bad. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when we was on a nine-game winning streak, we couldn't live off that week before. We have to prepare the next week for the next team with a no new game plan, and we got to keep working. And so after defeat, you do the same thing. You go over it, you watch the film, you learn from it, you put you behind you, get your next game plan out. We got to get fam you film out, start breaking it down and get ready for FAMU. It's the same thing. It's, it's a process, and you, you do the same thing every week, no matter who your opponent, who you're playing. It's the biggest game of the season next week. And, of course, when we come back on the Alabama a and Football Review, we'll look at those first half highlights, more of homecoming 2021 on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Kyle Maynard. Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book Fair Market Value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs! Brian Hicks, Director of Athletics, Alabama A&M University. I'm Connell Maynard, Head Football Coach, Alabama A&M University. Coach, are you ready for some football? I was born ready. So, get, get your, your season, season tickets today. today. Woo! The nature boy. In golf, if you make a mistake, there is a mulligan. Well, in God, if you make a mistake, there is mercy. Aren't you glad God has mercy for your mistakes? Hello, I am P.T., Pastor Troy. I want to invite you to come and worship with us at the Fellowship of Faith, where Jesus is exalted and the Word is explained. We love Alabama a &M. Go Bulldogs!
Welcome back to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. Coach, the first half, some exciting football, a couple of mistakes early, but the crowd and the game started off at a fever pitch. Your good friend, <laughs> one of your idols, was on the field during the coin toss, the nature boy himself, Ric Flair. Yeah, it was a great honor for uh, Rick to grace us with his presence. And uh, not only that, he came uh, by the office uh, about 20 minutes before kickoff. Oh, wow. And uh, took his sports jacket off and uh, just relaxed. And, and we got a chance to talk a little bit. And, and so we gave him his jersey with number 16 because he's 16-time world heavyweight champion with Ric Flair on the back of it. And uh, so he asked me, he said, you want me to wear the jersey or you want me to wear my jacket? I said, whatever you want to do, Nature Boy, you the man. <laughs> and so he's like, whatever you want me to do. He said, I wear the jersey if you want me to. But I kind of felt that you didn't really want to wear it. So I was like, whatever you want to do. He said, you don't want me styling and profiling? <laughs> I said, yeah, I want you styling and profiling. Put your jacket, put your jacket back on. So he put his jacket back on, and uh, we just shot the bull and told him about, uh, I'm from North Carolina, and he's from North Carolina, how we used to go to the Dorton Arena in, in Fayetteville and Raleigh to uh, watch him wrestle all the time against Rick okay. Steenbold and all those guys. And uh, he was thanking me, and I was thanking him. And uh, he also uh, made us a belt, a championship belt with, oh, wow. a with a and &M on it. And uh, it's real. He got real diamonds, and it's heavy. And oh, uh, wow. so I want to thank Ric Flair for that, and I thank him for gracing us with his presence, and I uh, thank that crowd, everybody, for showing up and showing out. And uh, I promise you, we won't play like that again. I want to also thank Megan, Conrad, and AJ for your fine work in helping us put that together. Then, of course, Coach, we get the coin toss out of the way. The crowd is electric. The 20, over 21,000 people sitting in the stands, and we're ready to play football. When you reflect back on the first half, Coach, what could you think you could have done different? Well, the biggest thing I thought was um, the, the uh, fumble scoop score for a touchdown. Uh, they kicked off us, and we were driving the ball down the field uh, in great position to score. And uh, uh, we missed the block on uh, 41 and of course he was hitting the quill as he was about to throw a fade to D. Anderson down the sideline mm. and uh, then he scooped and scored and I thought that just changed the whole momentum. Uh, we was excited, we was driving, you know they only gave us two touchdowns all year. We put a touchdown on right there the first opening drive of the game. That's, that's which is their whole mindset mm -hmm. and ours. And uh, instead of us going up seven zip with the momentum at home and sell our crowd, now we're down seven and the defense ain't hit the field yet. So um, it was one of the problems that we, we've been having is, you know, turning the ball over and then not only turning it over, giving up six points, you know. Right, right. It's like the third time it happened this year. And uh, you just can't do things like that, especially in the first quarter, opening drive, uh, just set, set the tone for the game. And uh, we really weren't able to recover. We weren't able to recover, and uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, you got to take your hats off to Jackson State, Deion Sanders. Uh, I said it uh, in the press conference. Mm -hmm. uh, he's doing a great job with those guys. He got some ball players. He got some dudes. Mm -hmm. He got some difference makers. And uh, they was a better team than us. They was a better football team than us. Uh, offensively, defensively, uh, special teams. And uh, we, got, we got to go back to the drawing board and we got to get better. And of course, in getting better coach, that means your student athletes get an opportunity to see how to overcome adversity. Of course. We, I mean, we, we're not going to quit. I mean, we could easily uh, went out and uh, be eight and two. That's a great football season, and we'll see what happened at the end. You know, right. let the chips fall where they may, but uh, we definitely ain't gonna give up. We're not gonna uh, we're gonna fight to the end, and uh, we're gonna play hard for sixty minutes every football game. We're gonna do what we've been doing in the past to get us to where we are right now. Right. And uh, this season ain't over; we're still young. There's no reason to panic, and of course, with FAMU coming to town, you'll probably pay more attention to trying to get the psyche of your team back on track. Had a lot of turnovers the last few weeks. You spoke about that and trying to get that corrected. Yeah, we got to. We got to get it corrected. I think we fumbled four times and lost two of them yesterday, and uh, we didn't get any turnovers. Um, we didn't. We didn't cause them to turn the ball over and didn't get a lot of pressure on, on the quarterback. And um, I mean, they had almost 500 yards total offense in only 51 plays, and uh, we had about 70 plays, and we was only able to muster 300 yards to total offense. So we couldn't run the ball. I think we had six yards rushing. <clears throat> we gave up about eight sacks. And so uh, we just didn't play well at all. We didn't play well in no phase of the football game. And we didn't show up. We did not show up. And I apologize to everybody for um, our football team not showing up. That's my fault. I'm the head football coach. And I promise you that never happened again. 
And of course, I like to say on the radio broadcast on 90.9 FM WJAB, when your football team is not performing, you're then turning to the band to give the, the crowd a show. The Marching Maroon and White did that yesterday, along with the university choir and pregame and halftime activities. And of course, Jackson State brought the sonic boom with them, so we had a lot going on. When we come back on the show, we'll take a look at the second half highlights right here on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement, but the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book fair market value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. A church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Again, thank you so much for watching the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Oh yes, I'm Ted Dixie, your host. Coach, we have an outgoing president. The halftime spectacular sending President Dr. Andrew Higgini Jr. off into retirement on December 31st. He had an opportunity to address the crowd. What has Dr. Higgini meant to you, coach? Everything, and uh, you know, I'll be forever indebted to Dr. Higgini. He hired me here uh, four years ago, and uh, so when I didn't have a job. Mm. And so I've been mean, filming that the Dr. Hugini, he's been a great president. Um, he's going to be even a better grandfather. He's looking forward to it. <laughs> I talked to him the other day. He's looking forward to spending time with his grandkids and just living life. He's, he said he's, he's done it long enough and he's enjoyed it. And now he want to enjoy life with his grandkids. So mm -hmm. I'm happy for him that he's happy and, and, uh, and the first lady's happy also. So I'm happy for them. And of course, the incoming president, <clears throat> Dr. Daniel Wims, coach. What do you think about Coach Wims, as I like to call him? Coach Wims, uh, number twelve. <laughs> number twelve. Number twelve. Number twelve is the man. Uh, 
um, Dr. Williams uh, was the provost, and now he's going to be the, the new president. And uh, he's excited about it. I'm excited about it. And I think he's going to take this university to even higher level than Dr. Houghini, who took it very high and did a great job, and athletics also. So I'm very excited. I'm very happy that Dr. Williams got the job. He got my support 122%. And of course, folks, you may not have known this, but part of that 21,000 person crowd were a lot of people from North Carolina. Yeah, I had a lot of my classmates, if you can believe it, from 1987. I had about 35 of those of my classmates and friends uh, that I grew up with to come and surprise me a Friday night right. at the hotel That's all right. and support us. And they supported me in this university. They didn't ask me for one ticket. They didn't ask me for no hotel room. Wow. That's how you that's, support, that's you know. Right. You, people always say, Coach, when you come and support you at the game, can you give me two tickets? <laughs> You're not supporting me when you ask me for tickets. That's you know? right. So that's right. they didn't ask me for no tickets. They didn't ask for anything. They flew in. They stayed overnight. They got their own tickets. And it was just great seeing them all after 34 years. And uh, all of them look good. And uh, I just thank them for their uh, unweatherly uh, support of me in this program. Of course, Coach. The big question is, did you cry when you saw them? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, but I was happy. I was happy, and I could have. But you know, I couldn't win that. <laughs> Big thanks to Missy, to Craig, and all the others that made that happen. We will see you again in the future, Coach. The season is not over by any means. You spoke about that earlier, and that starts with Fam U on Saturday. Yes, it does. And uh, we got we got to be ready. Willie is doing a great job uh, with those guys. Uh, he always has, and. And they got a great program, and, and they're looking to come in here and get a W because uh, they already got one conference loss, and they want to keep it right at that because uh, in order for them to win it, they need Jackson to lose twice because Jackson already beat them. So, uh, you know, they got to win out and, and see how it falls, see how the, the cookie crumbles. Uh, but they're going to come in hungry and ready to go. So we got to be able to match the intensity and get this thing turned around and headed back in the right direction. Of course, the Southwestern Athletic Conference is the most competitive conference in the football championship subdivision. So one conference loss does not put you out of it. But as you just mentioned, Coach, when you lose to a team in the same division as you, they have to lose twice for you to make up ground. That's right. And uh, now for us, with Jackson, they got to lose three for us to get back because they, oh, they, have, they won't have a loss when we got two. And so even if they did have two, they beat us head to head. So they would have to lose three for us. So. Um, you know, it's a long shot, but we got to just win out and see what happens. And, uh, you know, we went out, go 8-2, and two, uh, you never know we can get in the playoffs. So our season ain't over. We're going to keep fighting. You just mentioned playoffs, Coach. Just to give the Bulldog faithful something to look forward to, what is the major concern about making the FCS playoffs? Well, you got to get ranked. You got to get ranked uh, in the playoffs. And you got to get go up, move up in your region. And so um, we probably won't be too high this week. That's right. But if we go on a winning streak, That's we can right. just keep climbing every week and get there before the end of the season. So, um, but we just got to we got to get back to the basics and uh, start playing some better football. The playoffs won't be in our future. If you're looking for something to do, please visit aamusports.com. Follow the Bulldogs on social media. There will be a ton of photographs and videos from Homecoming 2021. We thank you all for coming and supporting the Bulldogs. It, that was the second largest crowd in Lewis Cruz Stadium history. Winning does that, Coach, and we thank you so much for that. When we come back on the show, we'll talk a little bit more about the Florida A&M Rattlers coming to Huntsville next weekend on the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Darrell brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Bulldog fans, the Alabama A&M Athletics Department is calling on you to help our student athletes. The Bulldog Strong Fund focuses on our student athletes by encouraging competition, during this global pandemic, competitive excellence takes on a new definition for our Bulldogs. This fund enhances our efforts to ensure our athletic department can service each team to become a prominent national competitor in all aspects of NCAA Division I athletics. 
Donation to the Bulldog Strong Fund will be used to cover student athletic scholarships, supporting recruiting efforts, and creating additional health and wellness initiatives. We're under tough and challenging times, but with your support, the Bulldog Strong Fund will thrive. Donations of all sizes make a huge difference and are greatly appreciated. Visit amusports.com to learn more about the Bulldog Strong Fund and how you can donate now. Thank you in advance for your continued support of Alabama a and Athletics and our student athletes. Go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, a church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Thank you again for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm happy to be your host, Ted Dixie. Coach, next up on the agenda is the Florida A&M University Rattlers, who also, with Bethune-Cookman, joined the Southwestern Athletic Conference this season. But you know what? Their history with Alabama A&M goes all the way back to the original HBCU Athletics Conference, the SIAC. Yeah, yeah, long time. I was a great, great historic university fam. Uh, a lot of great athletes and uh, politicians and doctors and lawyers. Uh, FAM has a great, great, great tradition in HBCU, and uh, it's going to be a great contest, and um, we're welcoming them to the SWAC, um, them and, and Bethune, and it's, it's just only going to make us, help us be the greatest uh, conference in HBCU, which is the SWAC. And of course, in the football championship subdivision, Florida A&M won the 1AA championship when they were a Division II school in the SIAC and had to petition the NCAA to participate in the playoffs and went to the finals two years in a row. Yep, yep, they did. Uh, and uh, they're the only team to ever do it. So um, I was able to get to the championship game in the D2 game, but wasn't able to win it. So I was trying to join them, uh, but we did get there and uh, we weren't able to win it. So FAM is, like I said, one of the most historic black colleges they are. So um, it's going to be a great contest. And uh, they got a great football team. They got a good offense, got some good receivers, as we do. Uh, <clears throat> and they got a good defense. Uh, the defense is right up there in the top in the league, uh, one, two, uh, behind Jackson. Uh, and uh, so we got our work cut out for us. We, we, got to, uh, we got to play. We got to play a good football game. Of course, Coach, it would be nice to welcome them to the conference like we did Bethune-Cookman. The Bulldogs defeated Bethune-Cookman earlier this season. Now Jackson State is on the menu, if you will. Might be another sold-out crowd for your tickets. Go to aamutix.com and see what's going on. Coach, when you walk in that meeting this afternoon with your student-athletes as we're taping it early on Sunday morning, what do you hope to see? Um, just some, some life. I, I mean, I know they're going to be down. They're going to be disappointed. Um, you know, nobody wants to lose. Everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to play well. Uh, it's just part of it. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to still be uh, soaking a little bit. And, uh, and you know, we got to tell them, look, like I always say, you can't live off last week, good or bad. Last week was bad. We got to let it go. You got to watch the tape. You got to learn from our mistakes, get better. Uh, and then we got we to work a little harder. We got to lift a little bit harder. got to run a little bit more. got to study a little bit more film. We got to be prepared. And uh, then we got to execute because we're still blowing coverages. We're missing run fits. We're still turning the ball over. So we got to do the little things. We got to go back to the basics, do the little things to help you win football games. And, and don't worry about the big picture. The big picture come when you do the little things. And of course, Coach, one question about your personnel. You changed quarterbacks in the game yesterday. The week before, people were asking, why not use that same strategy? Well, uh, when the game was over with uh, at that point, it was fourth quarter, four minutes left. And so we took a quill glass out because we didn't want to get them injured. 
in a game that was over with, and uh, then we can't help us the rest of the season. That's right. So uh, we also want to get it back up a couple of snaps also, and uh, Xavier did a good job in uh, running the ball uh, when we called his number uh, at the end of the game. But we really want to make sure the Quill didn't get hurt, and uh, and that this one game cost us three or four more games. So <clears throat> excellent thought, Coach. Now with playing your backup. Do you think that's going to have an effect on the game planning for your opponent? Well, you know, we always uh, have a game plan for him to come in and uh, try to keep the defense off balance, give him something else to look at and prepare for. So um, uh, maybe red zone, short yardage, we can bring him in and he can still throw the ball. So you can't just say he's going to run the ball because right. he can still throw the ball. And we might add that little dimension to the offense. And of course, folks, again, that kickoff for that game is 1 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, 1 o'clock p.m. at Lewis Cruz Stadium. Florida A&M <coughs> University comes to town. There's a rumor their band might be traveling as well. Coach, we thank you guys for doing what you do because winning is infectious, and that's what brings people into the stadium. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have been winning, and uh, uh, we, just, we just didn't show up yesterday um, when we needed to in the biggest game of the season, which was the next game and homecoming for everybody. We want everybody to be happy and make it a great homecoming by ending off with a win, and we weren't able to do that. Um, uh, but, but the guys never quit, and uh, we're not going to quit, and uh, we'll get better. Our support for Bulldog <laughs> Athletics is still strong, Bulldog strong as it always is. We thank you all for watching and for supporting and for being loud at the game. So, for Coach Maynard, I'm Ted Dixie. Thank you for watching the Alabama a and Football Review with Head Coach Connell Maynard. Good night. Bulldog fans, thank you for joining us today for the Alabama A&M University Football Review. Bulldog faithful, we encourage your support and participation. Until next time, go Bulldogs!